kind of dive right in, but endocrinology is the branch of biology and medicine that focuses on the endocrine system. And although the terms endocrine and endocrinology didn't come into usage until the 1800s, the study of endocrinology can be traced back to China over 2,000 years ago, according to the American author Robert K. G. Temple in his book, The Genius of China, 3,000 Years of Science, Discovery, and Adventure. As far as back as 200 BC, Chinese healers extracted sex and pituitary hormones from human urine using the sulfate mineral gypsum and the chemical compound saponin derived from the seeds of flowering plant. They used these extracts for medicinal purposes. So an overview of the endocrine system, uh, basically hormones, chemical messengers secreted into the bloodstream. They stimulate responses in distant targets secreted by endocrine glands or specialized cells in other organs. Compared to exocrine glands, endocrine glands are ductless and secrete internally. Compared to the nervous system, endocrine effects tend to be a lot slower but longer lasting. Endocrine messengers can affect a wide variety of more distant targets, whereas the nervous system is very specific. And the two systems coordinate responses, and some cells are neuroendocrine cells, so they both have to work with each other. What are the major organs of the endocrine system? So this is definitely something that you would have to know. Uh, you Basically, you have the pineal gland, the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, the thyroid gland, the thymus, the adrenal gland, the pancreas, some of the parathyroid glands right here. And then, of course, the gonads, the ovary, and the testes. And we'll cover these in the reproductive system. But as far as you're concerned, the pineal gland, hypothalamus, pituitary gland, thyroid gland, thymus, adrenal gland, pancreas, parathyroid glands. So you will have to label these on the lab practicum. Okay, and then I'll show you. Um, I think I've posted that already online. So what's the hypothalamus? That's a flattened tunnel shape above and behind the optic chiasma. So you have the pituitary gland, which has two parts. You have a denohypophysis, which is the anterior lobe and the pars tuberularis. Acidophils and basophils are hormone secreting cells. Hypophysial portal system, then you have blood vessel connection to the hypothalamus. You have a neurohypophysis, which is the posterior lobe stock, infundibulum, and the median eminence. Okay, so make sure you know the two parts of the pituitary gland. You've got the adenohypophysis and the neurohypophysis. The anterior lobe is the adenohypophysis, and the posterior lobe is the neurohypophysis. The neurohypophysis consists of nervous, not glandular tissue, that includes axons of hypothalamic neurons from hypothalamic hypophysial tract. So. Not all hormones come from the endocrine system. The eight hormone secreting glands of the endocrine system are the adrenal gland, hypothalamus, pancreas, parathyroid gland, pineal gland, pituitary gland, and the reproductive glands, ovaries and testes, and the thyroid gland. But some other organs and tissues that are generally not considered part of the endocrine system also produce and secrete hormones. For instance, the placenta of a pregnant woman secretes a few hormones, including estrogen and progesterone. And the stomach releases the hunger-inducing hormone ghrelin and the hormone gastrin, which stimulates the secretion of gastric acid. Here is the pituitary gland. We've got the anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary. So some of the hypothalamic hormones that you'll find are the gonadotropin-releasing hormones, trypto thyrotropin, sorry, thyrotropin releasing hormone, corticotropin releasing hormone, prolactin inhibiting hormone, growth hormone releasing hormone, and somatostatin. Those are the hypothalamic hormones. The anterior lobe hormones, follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone, adrenocortico hormone, prolactin, and growth hormone. Okay, so those are the hormones found in the two lobes there. Here's a histology slide of the pituitary gland. 
Now, let's kind of go over these hormones. Hypothalamic releasing and inhibiting hormones that regulate the anterior pituitary. So this is found in the anterior pituitary. So you get the tryptothyrotropin releasing hormone, TRH, promotes secretion of thyroid stimulating hormone and prolactin. Corticotropin releasing hormone, CRH, promotes secretion of adrenocorticotropic hormone. Gonadotropin releasing hormone, promotes secretion of follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone. That's important when you want to get pregnant or not get pregnant. Growth hormone releasing hormone promotes secretion of growth hormone. It's, when, it's how you turn from a baby to the beautiful creature you are now. Growth hormone inhibiting hormone inhibits secretion of growth hormone and thyroid stimulating hormone. And you have prolactin inhibiting hormone inhibits secretion of prolactin. Now the pituitary hormones so again, you've got some, these are found in the anterior pituitary. You've got follicle stimulating hormone found in target horns, ovaries, and testes. For the female, growth of ovarian follicles and secretion of estrogen. For males, it's the sperm production. Luteinizing hormone, ovaries and testes. For female, it's ovulation, production and maintenance of corpus luteum. So when you're ready to get pregnant, you'll do an ovulation text uh, kit, and it will measure the amount of luteinizing hormone in your urine. Thyroid stimulating hormone, thyroid gland, growth of thyroid, secretion of thyroid hormone, adrenocorticotropin hormone, ACTH, adrenal cortex, growth of adrenal cortex, secretion of glucosteroids, prolactin, those are mammary glands and testes in the female, obviously does milk synthesis. For males, increase luteinizing hormone sensitivity and testosterone production or secretion. And then you have growth hormones found in the liver, bone, cartilage, muscles, and fat. Widespread tissue growth, especially in the stated tissues. Then you have ADH, antidiuretic hormone, found in the kidneys, water retention. And then you have oxytocin. Remember, oxytocin. That's found in the uterus, memory glands, and the brain. Um, principal effects, labor contractions, milk release, possible involved ejaculation, sperm transport in the female, sexual affection, and parent-offspring bonding. So oxytocin is a very important hormone. Hormones and target organs of the anterior pituitary. So prolactin, thyroid stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, adrenocorticotropin hormone, okay, growth hormone. So all these affect these target organs here. So whose fault is it? It's a funny uh, slide. Osteoporosis is a common disease in aging people and makes bones less dense and more prone to fractures. Nearly 1 in 10 older adults in the U.S. has the disorder, according to the CDC and Prevention. Though osteoporosis is often thought of as a strictly a bone disorder, it often falls under the treatment of endocrinologists because of its underlying causes. In particular, Postmenopausal women sometimes develop the disease because of their low levels of hormone estrogen, which helps to maintain bone mass. In such cases, osteoporosis may be treated with hormone replacement therapy. So the condition can also arise as a result of other endocrine disorders such as hyperthyroidism, overactive thyroid. People with such conditions are considered to have secondary osteoporosis. So it's not always a bone disorder per se. Your endocrine system may play a role in osteoporosis. The pineal gland, also called the epiphyses cerebri, is at the roof of the third ventricle, posterior end of the corpus callosum. Uh, secretion peaks from one to five years of age, shrinks by 75% involution at puberty, and secretes melatonin. So you can see how the pineal gland is very effective for one to five years of age because babies are sleeping most of the time. But it shrinks by 75% uh, puberty. And the major role is to secrete melatonin. And it's also thought to play uh, roles in our circadian rhythm and mood. And we talked about the circadian rhythm uh, last time a little bit. The thymus is an interesting gland. Um, it's bilobed, meaning two lobes, and the mediastum superior to the heart. It's large in fetus and infants and involutes around age 14. So this, again, shrinks about puberty, around age 14. 
what happens in the thymus? You get the maturation of white blood cells, T cells, hormone stimulated development of lymphatic organs and T cells of thymopoietin, thymosin, and thymulin. Thyroid gland, largest adult gland to have purely endocrine functions. Two lobes joined by the isthmus, it's adjacent to the trachea. Highly vascularized. You have thyroid follicles, which are sacs with follicular cells. Hormones that are found in thyroid gland, heart thyroid gland, TH, is both thyroxine, T4, and triodothyronine, T3. And usually when you get your blood work, they'll measure both. Uh, and it raises the metabolic rate. And then calcitonin forms from C cells. So those are the hormones found in the thyroid gland. Um, no thanks. Well, it talks about diabetes, a disease in which the pancreas stops producing insulin, the hormone that regulates blood sugar. It's the most common endocrine disorder in the U.S., affecting about 8% of the population, according to the National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Disease. Today, physicians use, obviously, a blood test to diagnose the disease, but a different method was once common. The ancient Greek physician Hippocrates, from 463-77 B.C., the father of medicine, was the first physician known to diagnose diabetes mellitus, according to a 2000 article in the Journal of General Internal Medicine. His technique? Basically, he would taste his patient's urine for a distinct sweetness. <laughs> That's why I put, uh, no thanks, we'll stick with the uh, blood work. So there's the thyroid gland, um, thyroid cartilage, thyroid gland, isthmus, which is where the two lobes kind of come together, trachea. You have the parathyroid glands. There are four small ovoid glands in the neck, usually on the posterior side of the thyroid. They're usually variable in location, number, and size. Um, the parathyroid hormone is secreted by chief cells to raise calcium in the blood. And unfortunately, because they're found Posteriorly, if somebody does have thyroid cancer, sometimes it's difficult to remove all these, so sometimes a little piece is usually uh, um, left behind, and that's why it's difficult to treat. So here's the esophagus, here's the trachea, so you can see how intertwined this whole system is. You've got thyroid, esophagus, trachea. So you got endocrine system, digestive system, and then respiratory system all intertwined right here. Does stress kill? Yes, it does. Stress kicks the endocrine system into high gear. Obviously, this COVID-19, your stress is probably in high gear. In response to stress, the endocrine system quickly secretes various hormones at a higher than normal levels in order to help the body mobilize more energy and adapt to the new circumstances. For example, the pituitary adrenal axis starts releasing adrenaline to increase the volume of blood pumped up by the heart and the blood flowing to the skeletal muscles. And during acute physical stress, the pituitary gland may also ramp up secretion of the growth hormone, which enhances metabolic activity. So a little bit of stress is okay, but prolonged or frequent stressful events can lead to a number of endocrine disorders, including Graves' disease, gonadal dysfunction, obesity, according to the 2011 article in the Indian Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism. So chronic stress is not good because it can lead to obesity, gonadal dysfunction, and Graves' disease. So cortisol, you've heard about cortisol. All hormones interact either directly or indirectly with another. One situation that can drive up insulin is high cortisol levels, the stress hormone produced by the adrenal glands. Any type of stressor, whether it's internal or external, will raise cortisol. So what happens? Elevated cortisol leads to insulin resistance and muscle wasting. The muscle wasting is particularly constrained because that is a portion of our body mass that keeps our metabolism working at full throttle. So a simple test known as the adrenal stress index, which measures cortisol four times and DHE, our growth hormone or youth hormone, uh, dysregulated cortisol can result when its levels become too high or too low at various points during the 24-hour cycle. 
and these are adaptogenic herbs that can be used to help rebalance your cortical uh, levels, uh, ginseng, holy basil, milk thistle, rosemary, licorice root. And again, these are anecdotal. There's no, uh, there's not a lot of scientific uh, proof behind these, but they do, a lot of people have uh, noticed that those that have cortisol issues, ginseng, holy basil, milk thistle, uh, rosemary, and licorice root seems to help. The adrenal glands, also called the suprarenal glands, they're superior to the kidneys, they're retroperitoneal. You have the adrenal medulla, which is 10 to 20% of the gland, central. Uh, chromaffin cells secrete epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine. We talked about these neurotransmitters. Uh, they raise this, the metabolic rate and mobilizes energy. The adrenal cortex, which is the outer part, which is 80 to 90 percent of the gland, secretes more than 25 corticosteroids, including mineral corticosteroids, glucosteroids, and the sex steroids. You have a zona glomerulosa, which is the most superficial layer. You have the zona fasciculate, which is the intermediate layer, and the zona reticularis, which is the deepest cortical layer. So here's the adrenal cortex and the adrenal medulla. And it sits superior to the kidneys, and it's found retroperitoneal. All right, you've got the pancreas, pancreas islets, pancreatic islets. That's below and behind the stomach. The pancreatic islets, which are the islets of Langerhans, they're dispersed clusters of cells within the endocrine functions. The alpha cells cause glucagon, causes a rise in blood sugar. Then you have beta cells. Insulin causes absorption of blood sugar. Amylin enhances the insulin effects. Then you have delta cells, which are somatostatin, regulate speed of digestion. So make sure you know these uh, cells that are found in the pancreas and are found in the islets of Langerhans. Also know this slide right here it might show up on the uh, practicum. Uh, the telltale sign will be that there's islets of Langerhans. And this is where your alpha and data, beta uh, cells are found. And those are what regulate glucagon and insulin. Okay. So here's the tail of the pancreas. Here's the head. And here's the bile duct. So the pancreas is kind of interesting because it bridges two worlds. There are two types of glands in the body. You have exocrine and endocrine. We've been talking about endocrine for the past 20 minutes. Exocrine glands, which include the salivary, sweat glands, and the mammillary glands, excrete their products via ducts. Whereas endocrine glands, by contrast, release their products, which is our hormones, without ducts, right into the bloodstream. So make sure you know the difference between endocrine and exocrine. Now the beauty of the pancreas has both endocrine and exocrine functions. On one hand, it releases a number of hormones, including insulin and glucagon into the bloodstream, but it also secretes a pancreatic juice that contains important digestive enzymes via ducts into the small intestine. So the pancreas has two functions, exocrine and endocrine function. The gonads, uh, ovaries and testes, again, we'll go over these uh, a little bit further uh, when we do the reproductive system, but just to kind of, the ovaries are follicles that have theca and granulosa cells. Estrogen and progesterone regulate menstrual cycle of pregnancy, and we'll go into detail um, about this. And then inhibit, inhibits uh, follicle-stimulating hormone secretion. Uh, in the testes, you have interstitial endocrine cells, testosterone regulates sex drive, sperm production, you have sustentacular cells, which inhibit inhibits focal stimulating hormone secretion. Okay, so again, we'll talk about uh, these when we do the reproductive system. Here's the gonad. Here's the ovaries. Women have two. Testes. Men have two as well.